In this episode, we'll talk about how can gravity emerge from strings. Let's enjoy it. In a previous episode, we explained that strings are standard objects used for the quantization of gravity. The dynamic of the strings is explained through the Nambu Goto action, which is nothing else than an invariant element of area described by the string during its motion. The size and the mass of the string normally depends on its tension. In addition, different vibration modes correspond to different particles. The strings can be open or closed. Closed strings automatically respect the energy momentum conservation, while open strings don't preserve it naturally because the momentum flows through the edges of the string. For this reason, Open strings are always attached to the brains, which help them to restore the energy momentum conservation. But then it comes out the question, what is a the brain? In a string theory, we have open strings. Open strings have their edges attached to the brains. While the brains constrain the motion of the edges of the strings along the normal directions, the string edges are still free to move along the tangential directions. The d brains are particular objects. Not only they give some constraints to the edges of the strings, in addition, it has been demonstrated before that for each normal coordinate to the d brain, there is a scalar field associated to it. Finally, there is also a Maxwell or photon field living along the world volume of the d brain. The open strings also carry a photon field by themselves. Open strings, in addition, have an electric charge attached to their edges. The charge is only conserved when the open strings are attached to the brains. The conservation of the electric charge in string theory is a non-trivial aspect of the theory. Actually, the charge conservation requires, in addition, the inclusion of a string charge and a string field. The charge conservation in string theory will be discussed in future episodes. Besides the Maxwell field, open strings generate tachyonic particles which correspond to instabilities of the theory. Additionally, when the open strings are quantized, they contain massive tensor fields. However, we cannot identify the massive tensor fields with gravitons. Then, in string theory, the open strings cannot generate gravitons, or equivalently, gravity doesn't come from the open strings. But then the question is, how can gravity emerge from the strings? The graviton fell, or equivalently, gravity itself, emerges from the quantization process of a closed string. When we quantize a closed string, not only massless graviton fields emerge from the same process, it also emerges an antisymmetric tensor field, which, although looks similar to the Maxwell field from electrodynamics, is in a sense different. In fact, this antisymmetric field corresponds to the Carl Raymond field, another field emerging from the quantization process of a closed string is a massless scalar field called dilaton felt. Then we can conclude that in a string theory, gravity appears from closed strings as massless graviton felts. The Carl Raymond felt couples to strings, or equivalently, interact with the strings through a charge with the same name. But the Carl Raymond felt, as well as the associated charge, play a fundamental role on the conservation of the electric charge in string theory. Finally, the dilaton field plays a fundamental role in the definition of the string coupling constant. Then the coupling constant in string theory is not an adjustable parameter, but rather a dynamical variable, or equivalently, another field. In summary, 
the gravitational field in string theory emerges after doing the quantization process over closed strings. From the same quantization process, other fields emerge, including the Carl Raymond field as well as the Dilaton field, which controls the value of the coupling constant in a string theory. From the same quantization process, over open strings, we obtain the photon field and a massive tensor field. A string theory also presents some instabilities represented by tachyons emerging from instabilities of the vacuum state when we made the quantization process. Finally, we can say that the debrains represent the boundary conditions for the edges of open strings. They are important for preserving the energy momentum conservation and the charge conservation for open strings. For every normal direction to the brain, there is a scalar pair associated to it. The work volume of a brain also contains a Maxwell or photonic field. If you liked this video, please give us a like, share the link, and subscribe to the channel. More videos in Spanish and in English are coming very soon. Continue with us.